Hello guys and welcome to another David Simuletta. In today's video I have Ben with me and we're actually getting ready to uh, work on his Sprinter van. This is a 2003 Sprinter van. It is a little bit different than 2004 through 2006 and got to change a couple radiator hoses and do the radiator fluid flush. We got our work uh, cut out for us. So anyways guys enjoy the video. So the very next thing I want to drain is the radiator. This is actually a good radiator, but I pulled it up from one of my vehicles. You might be wondering, where's the drain plug located? And here's the actual draining port. That's where it comes out. So the drain plug is actually located directly behind it. So you just basically open it up like this. There's not a lot of room there, but you could kind of feel it from getting in from this side. You basically undo it like this, starts leaking radiator fluid. So we're going to start draining it on this side and of course the dog wants to give me kisses Guys, I'm going to try to show you what I'm doing So let me see here This is where the plug is. It's right there, but once I undo it I'm gonna have all kinds of river flowing here So there it goes, um, but this is what it looks like guys, it's black on this printer, it's not red. I'm gonna pop this off, and now it's really coming down. We do have this connect, as you can see it's not red like my 2006 radiator, it is smooth. Just drains here. It's just all over the place. This engine's just getting bait. Diesel, no. All right, we're gonna let that drain. Now it's time for us to close it up. Here's this little closing pin. This is a fog ring. Okay guys, so we're gonna be replacing this small hose and the larger hose that's back here. So we could use either a small screwdriver or a big one. This is not difficult. Just be careful pulling these hoses out because it is a, um, a plastic type of fitting. And any of these plastic fittings, they could actually break off, especially the ones on the power steering pump. Right here, this plastic can. People have broken that before. So you could kind of pry it like this a little bit with that screwdriver that we could just pull it off now we're gonna need to pull off this one so that's a metal one we could just kind of pull on it so now you want to make sure you match it up to make sure it's going to be the same you know type of a uh, pipe as you can see it's pretty easy to make that mistake so this is for the upper and that is for the lower Some more it's a fresh pipe okay so now we're going to have to disconnect this hose stop a little bit give it like one good pull and then just tuck it out of the way like that that way everything is visible Now, if you take a look at this particular hose, it has this rubber piece um, because this is actually original. But the other one, I believe it's an aftermarket type of hose. 
it does not have this piece so what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and actually install it um, it actually holds um, the little holes in place right where we need to be now we need to install this just slide it a little bit further and then install this this way Okay. Now, I have it. You ordered it already? I'm going to. Okay, nice. The bladder, so the lower one, that little bladder, funky looking thing. What is your What is your question uh, that you're asking? I just want this uh, like on a video. Sure. Like, uh, as far as the proper way to add coolant uh, from, from scratch. From, from, scratch. The, from scratch, okay. Yeah, from, you know, from zero to full. I'm going to uh, make this a uh, very, very, very simple explanation. Okay. If uh, you see like what we're doing with this is like, uh, we just drained it, yeah. uh, that coolant, and we're just trying to basically get the engine clean. So when we completely flush the engine out and there's just nothing but water in there, um, well, when you drain the radiator, there is still water inside the engine. And that's why we're still getting this, uh, this orange stuff. So basically once this water is already going to be clear then we know that we have water inside of the engine so that stuff is like not even mixed so obviously 50 50 mix is not going to work in this situation because uh you will use two gallons of it inside of your radiator tank and that's it it's gonna be done uh so it's not gonna work so uh, a logical uh thing to do is to use the stuff that's not mixed it's like a hundred percent grade uh because let's let's go figure there is about two gallons inside of the engine give or take so if you put the um the full concentrated stuff uh two gallons of it then if it's mixing with two gallons of stuff that's inside of the engine uh then obviously it becomes 50 50 mix now let's say you're you lost some coolant let's say you've been driving and now for instance like in your situation you want us to replace a um a radio hose a little bit later on and you're gonna wonder like okay so what should i do then well in that case you just drained uh 50 50 you know 50 50 mix if you're not going to reuse it because there's gonna be dust particles and stuff that's gonna get in it so this time at 50 50 mix either mix it yourself 50 50 or just get a 50 50 mix because the engine is already mixed so that stuff is fine so you're just basically messing with the radiator so when you drain the radiator you're going to drain about two gallons of it so get 50 50 mix two, but two gallons of 50 50. i don't buy 50 50 mix right. um and here's why you're gonna pay very close to the same for the stuff that's already like not mixed so why not mix it yourself it's like you get two gallons of it uh, right away so you get one jug instead of two jugs and now you just made two yep. so what you need to do is just pour that uh completely 100 percent one jug just pour it completely in the radiator then use the same can fill it up with water and pour that inside of the radiator now you got your 50 50 mix You've saved some money and uh yep. you know and i guess that explains it right yep. Yep. okay so hopefully uh, for you guys that's maybe uh, trying to drain your radiator, this uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, and one thing I'm going to let you know, like what we're doing is uh, we don't have like a T connector uh, to try to flush out the, the system of the car. So basically first, uh, in order to flush out your radiator, um, and I don't know if this is a classic way of doing it, but this is my way of doing it. And uh, it's just, a, it's just easy to do it and it's common sense. So first, just find a drain plug, which is on the right side of the radiator. Um, I will show you in a little uh, image where it's located on the radiator that's already been outside of the car. That way you can actually see what it looks like. Get a feel for it, undo it. It's, kinda, it's not going to be leaking good. So then remove that uh, top lid. Then it's gonna be like coming out with a blast, but it's gonna be going all over the place, but mainly kind of like in this little area right here. So drain. <coughs> <coughs> drain the radiator completely once you end up draining it 
close everything up, fill it up with water, uh, the radiator, uh, because you still have coolant inside of your engine. So then start up your van, let it run about two, three minutes. It's going to circulate the fluids. Once it circulates, shut the engine off, drain the coolant again, and just rinse and repeat uh, until you start seeing clear fluid. So this is, um, this is the remaining fluid that we have uh, removed. So now we're, we have uh, like a mixture between what the engine had, which was a 50-50 mix. So now it's like, I don't know, like 25, 75 mix now maybe. Yeah. So 25 uh, fluid and uh, 75 water. So we're just gonna try to do it till it's clear. Um, we will be replacing it with the uh, old makes and models type of fluid. So you could add any color coolant. It is fine to this particular coolant that we're going to be using. Um, so you don't have to really make it like nice and clear, but we're going to try to get it as clear as possible. So that is the, the idea. I don't know what kind of radiator fluid I use. I use something simple that came from Walmart. This is five times more effective. Protects against corrosion. I mean, what more can you ask for? So that's the stuff I'm going to use it. Uh, according to the labels, which you should probably never trust, it's the number one engine protection brand. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it's legit. So that's what we're gonna be using. The good thing about it is you could add this to any coolant and you're fine. This is for all makes and models. So this is 100% stuff guys, so the engine has clear water inside, so this will actually mix with the stuff that's in the engine, and it will ultimately become 50-50 mix. I really should be using a funnel. Some just leaked out from the top. Yeah, we have a hose back here, so it's going to look nice. Look, it's perfect. It's perfect, just like the phone call. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna give myself a bath, your engine a bath. Yeah. One thing I don't recommend is bathing this engine. Yeah, I don't. I use, uh, when I was doing work on it, the greens are spraying different areas. Yeah, like, like yeah, not saturated or anything. It's like, you know, these things, they have like too many sensors yeah. and it's so easy to cause them to go off whack. It's like, that's why it's like, I, I don't even keep my engine clean. Yeah, well, I have to, man, I'm a fan at it. I like keeping it clean, that way I can spot leaks. Man, yours, yours is like by far the most taken care of sprinter yeah, that I've seen. It always so right. nice. That's all my stuff I do, man. So I, when I look down, I see grease or oil or something, I know yes. that's new. Well, this is a Mercedes and you're treating it like a Mercedes, yeah. not like a work truck. Yeah, and shoot, I mean, look look how nice it is. Yeah, I want to keep it nice. Yeah. I, it's um usually... um. It's all because of the owner who takes, it, takes yeah. care of it. It's, yeah. you know, the, it will live longer. Absolutely. It's almost like the, the vehicle appreciates it, you know? Yeah. 
Well, again, you can pop the hood and you can spot problems. Yes. So I guess let's start it up, let okay. it circulate, and we'll see what color it ends up being. Okay, let's do it. Should be a nice green. So that little noise you heard, that's water in the belt. That's quite normal. Yeah. Everything's looking good. Pulleys are looking good. It's there, nice and straight. Perfect. Is there a point where you can have the belt too tight? Where it puts yes. too much pressure on the other on the bearings? It, it is. Yeah, man. Um, but you're not gonna worry about it. There's nothing you could do. Uh, you're using the original tensioner, all the original pulleys. Uh, I believe this belt is one inch longer than what's in 2002, 2004, or half an inch. Okay. So does the, the, the tensioner make it where you can't over tighten the belt? Yes, it's a self tension. Self tension. So you can't over tighten. You can't. You can't stretch. You can't. You, you, no, you can't make it more than uh, it is. Okay. Uh, the worst that could happen is. After a while, the, the spring will become weaker. Sometimes they could break, yeah, yeah. the springs. I never had one break on me personally, but I think after a while, the spring becomes a little bit weaker and it just does not keep as good of a tension. Sure. Causing the belt uh, to slip off, maybe with even like little splashes of water get on it. Right. Like, this was happening to me. Uh, it rained very hard uh, in some kind of states where I was driving. And I passed through some big areas of water where as you pass it through there, you have no choice. Some water splashes underneath. Sure. And that caused my belt to slip up two times. Wow. And that was the issue is my tensioner got to the point where it's weak and it was slipping out. But it was so quickly, I, as soon as I installed the belt back on, hit another pothole, belt came off. Wow. Yes, very easy. So this is good, let's shut it off. Yes. Jason, can you bring me a paper towel? Do you have any paper towels? I do, man. We just need like one paper towel. So before it was this very beautiful green. Now it should be a little bit more mixed. And as a matter of fact, I'll tell you, um, the more of a mix you have in there, I think the better. Like, yeah, you think so? Yeah, I think it's if it's a, a lot more water, Sure, it's gonna be okay in the summertime, but in the wintertime, you don't want it to freeze, so. Yeah. Yeah, Can I yeah you could take them, Jason. Yes, yeah, it's, it's nice color. Okay, all right. Oh, so it does have some co uh, coloring inside of the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the white portion, so it did, it did mix really well. I'm 37 years old, and yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke, but I learned to solve problems on my own. Now, I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? VF Sprinter expedite their business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.